Hey, Dennis O'Brien, um, let's talk about it. I'm here with Susan Johnson and Matt Rupar, and we've got a really great guest tonight. He's been on a few times in the past, and this is a real good and important time for him to be on now because we're in the middle. Well, we're, we're almost finished. We're, we're almost done with the budget season, the town budget season. That is a big deal. That is a, a, one of the most important functions of local government. You've got to fund the government somehow. It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't work uh, if you don't have some money. And anyway, Jim Rivers, uh, the, our town manager, and also the chief executive officer of the Willimantic Taxing District, which covers uh, police and fire in Willimantic, he is uh, with us, and he's going to be talking about with us. He's going to be talking about the uh, the budget referendum coming up, and it's going to be on the 14th of May, right, uh, Jim? Yes, uh, thank you both for having me. I love your show, and I love to be here, and it's a, it's a great way to communicate, especially when we have things, uh, you know, great accomplishments, but of course, like this time of the year, as you mentioned, we have the budget. So we want to inform the public as much as we can so they can make a, a good decision uh, when they vote. Uh, as you mentioned, Dennis, we do have a in Wyndham a mandatory referendum. Uh, we're, I think we're, we're one of the few towns of our size that have that mandatory referendum. Uh, it's usually something you might see with the smaller towns. Uh, but we do have it, and leading up to that, starting in about January, we start meeting with all the different department heads of the town. I have 20 department heads that work under me. As you mentioned, the city departments also report to the town manager in Wyndham. And uh, so they start putting their numbers together in worksheets, and then we start sitting down in February and hashing it out. And then I, I have to present it to the town council first. Another thing we have unique in Wyndham is we have a town manager. We have 11-member board uh, town council. We have a seven-member board of finance, and we have a six-member board of directors for the Wilmington Taxi District. So we We've got all of the layers of, uh, I'll say, checks and balances, and then some. So we have to start early. So we start uh, in February with the council, a first presentation. They have a few weeks to, to get those budgets together. Um, by m- middle of March, they have to report to the Board of Finance with their budget, as well as the Board of Education, which is not something that I, I have to deal with, but... Um, you know, we're working in parallel towards that m- that March 15th date where the Board of Finance receives the budgets from us. And then the Board of Finance has been for the last month or, or five weeks. They're working over the budgets. They're looking at them, asking lots of questions, asking for data and different reports. And they then act and create a budget or set a budget for the townspeople to consider on that referendum. So we have done all of that. We have gotten to the point where we have numbers that we can present to the voters. So that's the process. Well, thank you for that explanation, Jim. And, uh, you know, this is Susan Johnson, and I, I think that's a great explanation. Did you leave out the uh, Willimantic Taxing District uh, Board uh, when you yes, discussed it? Yes. So, yeah. so they kind of act as the Board of Finance and the council for the Willimantic Taxing District. So they get their budget you know, about the same time as the Board of Finance, at middle of March. And then they start working. Same thing. So um, uh, we're working, again, the Board of Finance is working alongside the Willimantic Taxing District and also the first taxing district, which is the, the Wyndham Village areas. They have fire and library and a few other things out there. So, uh, yes, I have to work both of those teams of elected officials and get them whatever they need, and they have to come up with some numbers. So they both have set their numbers uh, as of last night. And Dennis, you're on the Wilmanic Taxing Board, uh, Board of Directors, uh, and you were there. I was there. I was, was uh, there. right. Yeah. I was in the room. I had a seat at the table. <laughs> yes, he did. He ran for that, and he, he actually you had a uh, few few sessions back when you were the chair of the Charter Revision Commission. Uh, worked on creating that special taxing district, and then uh, for the Willimantic Service District. Because back when I was on the Board of Selectmen, which is now called the Council, uh, we uh, addressed all the budget items, whether it was the uh, town or the uh, Willimantic. Uh, 
uh, you know, taxing district, which is the police and fire, uh, the paid police and fire. And then the uh, first taxing district uh, would just address the, uh, the the things that they want to do in the villages, North Windham, South Windham, Windham Center, and they actually address the uh, volunteer firefighters and also other things like they have a softball league and uh, the library and that sort of thing. Libraries, actually. So it's one of those things that uh, we've changed a little bit. And uh, maybe, Dennis, you know, you might want to just talk a little bit about how you're on that Willimantic Service District Taxing Board now and just a little bit about, you know, how how this new change is, uh, is working. Well, uh, that started a few years ago. And the w originally it was the way it was set up on a, by a prior Charter Revision Commission, which I did chair also, uh, we set up a special taxing district uh, board for the city of Willimantic, uh, namely police and fire, paid police and fire. And, and uh, originally the members were all the elected members of the town council who were from Willimantic. And there were some concerns raised about that by some people from the Wyndhams and um, one person in particular, but I won't name him. But, but in any event... Uh, you know, maybe he was right. I don't know. But anyway, we uh, we decided that uh, at a last our last charter revision that we would we would limit it to people who were not members of the town council from Willimantic. So, starting uh, this year, uh, because we had to wait for people who were elected previously for their terms to expire. But starting th this year, starting in November, uh, in fact, actually starting last year, November of. Uh, 2023, uh, all six members of the Taxing District Board are elected independently. And we have six members, and um, Nectalis Martinez uh, is the chairman. He's a holdover member, actually. He, he was on the town council, but did not run for re-election this, this term. And he is the chairman of the of the group. I'm the vice chairman, and we have other members. We have two members of the Green Party, Doug Larry and Mike Westerfield, and we have two new members from the Democratic Party, um, oh God, Jared Leitzel and uh, Adam Richardson. And uh, it's a great group, and we have been able to agree on most everything with uh, the, the tremendous help we have gotten from the town, and uh, mainly in the person of our town manager, Jim Rivers. And we finished our work last night. We voted on a budget to send to the town meeting. There has to be a town meeting under the charter. It was something that I thought was a vestigial uh, agency that probably should should have been eliminated, but because there's no vote taken at this meeting. That's on the 7th of May. And if anybody, if people want to come, I think it's at 6.30, Jim. On, on May 7th for the Taxing District Board. And if people want to come, that's fine. We'd be glad to discuss the budgets with them and uh, uh, for the city and answer questions. But, um, you know, historically, uh, ever since the, uh, the meeting was being held without a vote, uh, attendance at the meeting has not been great. But we do want people to attend the vote on the 14th of May, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. We want everybody to vote, everybody who's eligible, and that would be uh, people who are registered voters in the town of Wyndham and also people who own, uh, who live in the town of Wyndham and own property valued at more than $1,000, even if they're not registered to vote. So we want everybody to vote on uh, election day, uh, May 14th. That's referendum day. Right, Jim? And absolutely. And like you said, we have a, a full slate of meetings, but many of them don't uh, serve a purpose to, as far as setting the numbers. They're more of a question and answer if there are any questions. I would make a note, that Dennis, that we, we both bodies had public hearings as we do every year. Uh, I think the, at least the hearing for the, for the town is required. The city has been a tradition, but we couldn't really find that uh, written anywhere, but we do it anyway because it's a great idea. Um, but those hearings did not yield a lot of comments this year. In fact, uh, I say the only people that commented at any of those meetings were, I'd say, elected officials that just wanted to come into the other group and have a have a quick comment to them. Um, like that is unusual. Uh, if you go back to when I started about seven years ago, uh, we sometimes have a room full of people at these hearings, and. Uh, 
And now, uh, it, gradually in the last seven years, there's been fewer and fewer people attending these meetings, uh, which is actually a good sign. It usually means in most towns that there's a great deal of confidence that all the elected boards and commissions uh, or the elected boards and the council are, are doing their job and that they feel comfortable uh, that they don't need to come in and start you know, managing the, uh, their elected uh, people. So uh, the, that's the good news. The bad news is we don't get any feedback, so it's a, we're, we're flying blind here. We don't, know, we don't know how everybody feels about the budgets, but usually when nobody comes out to, to have any complaints, you know, uh, uh, abstention is acceptance, I guess, when it comes to the budgets generally. Well, so let me, that's one, one I note. just want to make a comment about that, and you make a remarkably good point there, Jim. Uh, and I think that, but when you think about all the, <clears throat> excuse me, interaction that all these boards have with the with the, with the uh, board, uh, not board of uh, selectmen, but the council now, the finance board, the board of education, the uh, the. Uh, Willimantic Service District Board, and then you've got the board, First Taxing District Board. All these boards are communicating about the budget in addition to working with the staff. That's a lot of people, if you count it up. Uh, that's a lot of people who are working hard to make sure that everything works in terms of what money we're getting in, what money we have in terms of revenue from local property taxes, and uh, how we're managing uh, the how the town looks. And, and the town looks very good. We're, we're we're taking care of the students with uh, with the school buildings, and uh, the town is taking care. Of, the town does that, but uh, it's working in conjunction with the board of ed, and then also the uh, the actual buildings that we have that are being renovated here all throughout the town. And so, uh, so I think people are looking at the fact that the the money that's coming into the town is working well for the people. Yeah, I, I think, especially in recent years, everyone, most everyone in town, sees the value of the expenditures and the capital investments that we've made and the return on that investment for their, for their property values, for their quality of life in the town, for the reputation of the town. And we, we talked about this many years ago that, you know, it turned the reputation around of the, the community, and that's when people start coming back and they invest and they live here and they want to raise a family. And I think we've really turned that corner, and it was more than evident in the recent revaluation uh, that we had, and we had a great increase in values, and I think everybody saw it coming. I think they, there was no surprises to most property owners that they have created a great deal of uh, shareholder value, as I call it, in their, in their homes. And uh, that also helps, I think. People think that uh, they don't mind paying taxes generally as long as they got something. They don't want to pay... High taxes, our mill rate used to be almost 50 mils, or it was over 50 mils there for a short time. And and then your values are very low, some of the lowest in the state. That hurts. That really feels bad. And now I think, uh, you know, we'll get into the numbers here before, before I lease, I think, today. But, you know, you're talking about a mill rate that is being proposed uh, for the town at 20, you know, 27 and change um, versus, you know, the city and the, and the town being over 50. Um, you know, so we're adjusting that mill rate down, of course, because of the reval. Um, that is a huge shift, um, and it's it's a shift that also the outside world sees because they, you know, some investors look at the mill rate. They want to come here to invest. If the mill rate's off the charts, they're like, oh, I don't want to go there. I'm going to have huge tax bills, and they see that mill rate down in the, you know, t- more towards the average of the of the state, um, like I think we are now, um, and especially for an urban center like we are, that's a pretty low mill rate for a city. A uh, small city and a you know the demographic, the incomes, and things that we have, which are generally low, um, in the, the low the property vet, property taxes that we don't collect on almost half of our real estate, so that's a handicap as well. But we still have a pretty low mill rate after this reval, uh, finally after all these years. So there's a lot of good things happening, and all these things contribute. You made a point too. I want to just address. I have 24 bosses. Okay, uh, I think that's a record too in the state. Because uh, I have 11 council members, seven, you know, seven board of finance, and six on the board. Um, and, and you know, they, like you mentioned, they're all talking to each other. They're out in the community talking to the community. So one advantage of that is you have a lot of coverage. You have a lot of coverage to communicate what is going on, why we're doing it, um, and that does help. Uh, when it comes to passing things. It absolutely does. And the other thing I like to just emphasize, you did mention it, but the 
higher the property values, the lower the mill rate. And I think that's another thing that businesses look at when they look to invest in a community. They'll know that the value of the property that they're investing in is valued higher in that region. And so that's one of the things that people need to really understand because people think their bills will go up if their value goes up. But as a general rule, the, the cost, the, whatever it costs to manage the town hasn't gone up that much, so the bill isn't going to go up that much. But when the, when the value of the property is really high, the mill rate goes down, and it, it, it inspires more investment. Well, for most yeah, people, uh, for most people, from what I'm told, um, what I've learned, uh, their their home is their most valuable asset, and and for the, you know, given the all the construction, uh, uh, public construction that's going on in the last six or seven years, got the community center, the new parking garage, the Shabu stage, and the, you know, the high school is the jewel in the crown, which is going to be finished up uh, within a year or so, and maybe less, and uh, people who have been there, I haven't been in it for a long time, but they say it's fabulous, and, uh, you know, I'm sure that that is attracting, uh, there's a lot of uh, homes being being sold, bought, bought and sold in this town, sold and bought in this town, and, uh, you know, the people that are selling are, are, are getting their getting their money's worth, and, and, and that's that's wonderful. Uh, so people's uh, homes are, are, are valued where they should be, and, and, and a lot of it has to do with the improvements in town, and, you know, and it's, it's now it's the springtime, and the springtime, you go around town and you see people out there working on their homes, um, uh, doing little fix-up jobs, mowing their lawns, trimming their their hedges, doing all kinds of good things in the springtime, and you know, right now it's it's more evident than ever because people really love being here. It's a uh, it's a great place to be. Uh, people have always loved it, uh, but co they've complained a lot about uh, certain things, and you know, and one of them is their their home values. But uh, that that's improved and changed a lot. And so. We're a much more attractive town, not only to businesses, but to uh, people who may want to move here and have their kids go to school and attend a new, uh, a, a renovated as new high school, for example. And there's talk about a new uh, elementary school. So this is a, a community that's on the go, on the rise. And it's, uh, I think it's reflected in the attitudes that people have towards the uh, town government and, and all the town government has done to make that happen. And, 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 you know, we'll, we'll see what happens on May 14th, but I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, passing the, all the budgets again, like we have in the past few years, uh, because people are very, very happy about what's going on here. Yeah, we, uh, uh, this town has had a history, a terrible history, honestly, of, of uh, and it goes, all these things go hand in hand, right? And I think you just hit it, Susan hit it. Um, they all mesh together, and, and not passing budgets, it, uh, it has a uh, an effect. It's it's a cause and an effect, right? It uh, it causes you a lot of grief because you're, you don't have a spending plan. And I think this town at times went went you know six months without a spending plan. Um, that is chaotic, and chaos is not what the bond market wants to see. So you get higher rates when you go to borrow. It's not what people coming here want to see or or, or uh, businesses. Um, you you uh, lose an efficiency from. Your capital money now gets stale, and, and inflation could bite into it a little bit. So uh, there's a whole bunch of consequences of not passing budgets, never mind the direct cost of having these referendum over and over again. Um, but, again, we're not doing that anymore. And I think you mentioned it, Dennis. You know, we, we were, as we were inching towards COVID, it was getting easier uh, to pass budgets. But after COVID, we had a couple years there where we didn't vote in person. Uh, you know, the Board of Finance took care of the budgets. But then these last two cycles, I think the last uh, budget, we passed it by two to one almost. And uh, that is incredible for a town with our history. But all these things go hand in hand. Look at, look at our neighborhoods, and you just touched on it. You drive around in our town now, and it's, it's pretty nice in every, just about every neighborhood. There aren't too many neighborhoods left that need a good facelift. Everybody has pride in their homes, and that goes hand in hand with you know, the infrastructure, better schools, all those things, lower mill rates, all those things are really clicking together. And, and I don't see it stopping. I think we've got a lot of momentum. We've got a lot of good projects. We've only got about half these ARPA projects done. We're going to really give a facelift to all of our, our rec parts. We, I think we talked about that the last time I was on. 
And uh, you know, it's more is coming, folks. It's, yes, it is. You know, I got to say that that's great. And I want to just also give a shout out to the code officials who are enforcing the codes and the fact that we now have uh, really enough code officials to actually make sure that the codes and the housing and, and the areas that people are living in are, uh, we have, an, we have uh, so few places to have to do the enforcement with that our code officials are able to keep up with the work so much better, and they're they're really uh, very efficient at that. So I do want to make sure that we give a shout out to our code officials for making sure our neighborhoods are looking good, making sure that the uh, the properties when people call our code officials uh, that they uh, they come out and they work with the owners of the properties to try and figure out what the best way to move is. And uh, nothing could be nicer than what Eastern did on the corner of uh, Prospect Street, uh, which is a really a fabulous job. And I have to say thank you to Eastern for making that property look really good now. It's really helped that neighborhood. Yeah, you know, uh, the, the, another example of investment that the town made, the decisions the town made even before I got there, they created a blight fund. So we find people pretty heavily if they don't address the issues that we bring to them. And that money goes back into a fund to go right back out to either, you know, tear down homes or, or provide the attorneys that we need to to put pressure on people to, to fix things they should, they should be fixing. Uh, but what's happening, and it just happened probably in the last year, we're starting to see, we're collecting data on the com- number of complaints that we receive. We're starting to see it turn the other way where the complaint, n- number of complaints are going down. So that is a sign that, you know, the standards haven't gone down because I think people are fussier than ever, which is great, too. But that now there's less to complain about, at least it meets our, our, our code and uh, ordinance for, uh, for blight. So it's all working just like everybody hoped it would. Many years ago, it takes a long time sometimes to see the results from the investment. And I think that is an example. With, you know, you could look, another big example is the police department. For, you know, that, that investment was really started, you know, I call it the Dan, Dan Rather era. But 20 years ago, they, the town decided, the city decided, we've got to put some money into this. We've got to fix this. And, and that has paid great dividends as well. So the crime rate's down. And that fits right into everything else we've talked about. But, uh, you know, it's, I'm, I couldn't be prouder to be the town manager in this town. I'll say to both of you that. Well, I, I want to thank you for your work and the staff as well, because I know you're there working real hard to make sure that Wyndham's in great shape, and I, I appreciate that very much. And plus, it's really great to have staff people we can communicate with as a state legislator. I really enjoy being able to communicate with all the members, uh, the elected member, members uh, on the on the boards and, and commissions, but also uh, with the staff members so we can work on things that, you know, we can try and fix uh, in terms of how the state works with the t- Town. And, the, and the state people that I have to work with are excellent. Uh, they've been they've been spot on in terms of being able to connect with them. And um, I have a great speaker. We have a wonderful uh, uh, president, uh, pro tem of the Senate, and a great governor. So we're really, uh, you know, working together on a, on so many things. Of course, nobody agrees on every single thing, but but as a general rule, we're, we're working together and we're we're doing a good job. Speaking of working together, I've been involved in local. Uh politics in different ways for more than 40 years and uh, I don't think I've ever seen the uh, people in town whether they're Democrats, Republicans, Green Independent or whatever working together as closely and as, as you know in, 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 a, in such a civilized and a civil fashion uh, working together uh, uh, you know and I think the, <laughs> the, the Congress could take lessons from us and <laughs> it could also take lessons from, from the people in the legislature, I think, to some extent, although on, on our local level, I mean, you know, our Board of Education, and and, I, and I've worked in a lot of towns in this area, and one thing that is almost typical in towns around the state is that boards of education and town councils, or town hall, so to speak, are usually at loggerheads, and they, they usually do not get along that well they're in compet- they see themselves as in competition with each other and they don't uh, they find ways to disagree and the some of the most 
unusual ways I've ever seen. Nothing, nothing surprises me anymore. But I got to tell you, in this town, we've got a situation where our town government, our town hall government, and our and our superintendent of schools and boards of ed, board of education, uh, town council, board of finance, everybody's working together. It's never been like this before. I've never seen it like this before, and it it really really bodes well uh, for the town of Wyndham. No question. Absolutely, Dennis. I, I'm just uh, thrilled to be able to continue the the work that everybody's doing, and uh, it's great to have the communication channels wide open. So when somebody needs something, uh, we can go. I can go to the town if I want some information about what's going on, or they can come to me about legislation that we're passing or laws that we've already passed, uh, how we do our budget. All those things at the state level have a big impact locally, and having the both the local and the state understand how they how they gel together is really important. And it's something I've been able to communicate to the council uh, and to the Board of uh, Finance and to the Board of Education. And because there's a lot of complexity in all those different budgets. So we're running up to uh, let it, getting a, a few minutes from our sponsor to help pay for the show. Uh, so this is Susan Johnson with Dennis O'Brien and our very special guest this evening, Jim Rivers, the town manager of Wyndham. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back, everyone. This is Susan Johnson, and I'm here with my co-host, Dennis O'Brien, and our very special guest this evening, Jim Rivers, the town manager for Wyndham. Uh, so we were talking about a number of things with respect to the budget, and you have some more things uh, that you want to present here today, right, Jim? Yeah, we, we talked about the budgets in general, the schedule uh, in the first half of the show, and I, I guess I'd like to get into some of the details. I'm sure people that are listening would like to hear you know, what's, what's about to happen or what they're voting on. Uh, so, again, just in general, uh, this year's a special year. Every five years we reevaluate, reevaluate all the properties in town. And as you had mentioned in the first half, that doesn't necessarily mean your, your value going up doesn't necessarily mean your taxes are going up. So what happens is the average of all those values going up kind of recalculates the mill rate, and we've, we've dropped it down substantially to where the averages of all the property, you know, would have brought it up or, or uh, brought up the value, and then the, the, uh, the tax number goes down. So we, uh, the, the good news is that we're not raising taxes a whole lot from that base number. Um, the expenditures are up a little bit in both the Board of Education, the town, and, uh, and the city, uh, but we, we do have some good news there to offset that. But uh, what I want to say about one last thing about Reval. Um, it's really a shift in value, so it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to pay more just because your house is worth more or your business. It means there might, might be a shift. So sometimes there's no shift. Everybody kind of goes up at the same rate. This time the shift occurred uh, that we had, like, the mobile homes and the manufactured homes, condominiums, and the small multifamilies, the two, three, four families, they went up more than the average. Now, if you go back to five years ago, it was the opposite, where commercial property went up more than the residential properties. And I think the residential properties last time, I think it was pretty flat and somewhere down. Uh, but this time, they have gone up more than the average. So uh, on average, uh, you have uh, more value in your home if you have a manufactured home or a mobile home than you did five years ago. And I think most people understand that. Um, and that means this, there might be a shift. Uh, towards them, where businesses that got hit pretty hard five years ago might see a little relief uh, or have different types of business problems. So that's that's the reval. But then we get into the budget. So the budgets are different than reval. Uh, the budgets occur uh, with expenditures that we have, and then we have revenues that offset those expenditures. We get a lot of money from the state, thanks to Susan and May and all the other people that work hard to bring Wyndham their due because we have uh, challenges that maybe other communities don't have. But in recent years, we've been very successful on the grant side of things from the state. Thank you, Susan. And we have uh, more money going to the school system. And also, a few years ago, we got a big increase in pilot payment in lieu of taxes, because a lot of our property is state property in the town and hospital. And we get money from the state to help help with that what would have been taxation that we can't tax them. So well, a couple years ago, I think about three years ago, we saw a big boost there that really helped, and we had lowered taxes then. In the city, I think three mills, the tax rate went down three mills. We gave it back to the people. We didn't just spend it. Another reason we're probably passing budgets, by the way, is I think people really appreciate that we didn't just try to spend all that money. We gave it back to the people. 
I so just want to. Really yeah. yeah, go I'm ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, please. Uh, I, I just wanted to give uh, Dennis credit for the work that he did with the payment in lieu of taxes because he went around to all the state, all the, all the towns that had uh, the same kind of thing that we have here. What we do here is we serve the region and we serve the state because we don't get a chance to collect the taxes on the state properties and on the nonprofits in some circumstances. And so we do not get property tax in those situations. The towns around us, uh, except Mansfield that has a lot of pilot as well. The, but the, all the towns around us, none of them have that, that kind of thing that they do for the region that they do for the state. And so as we move forward, and one of the things I like to stress on these shows is the fact that we serve and we should be paid for the service we give to the state. We should be paid for the service that we give to the region. With the nonprofits that are here doing great work, helping the people, they're here in the uh, group homes, uh, the hospital that does great work and is a fabulous uh, emergency room and it's a wonderful hospital hospital and we want to make sure people understand that they get great service here. We have Eastern Connecticut State University. We have the community college. We have the tech school. We have an airport. Uh, we have three nursing homes. We have all these things, the Federally Qualified Health Center and Veterans Services, Social Security is here. Uh, the uh, Department of Children and Families is here. Department of Social Services is here. All these programs are here and we serve the state and the region with these programs here. And it costs the people who live here. But because if the state makes the right investment, the property taxes will be also uh, going down more because the state pays for its share. It pays for the share of the things that the other towns don't have to pay burden. They don't have that burden. Nevertheless, we have a caring community here. We have a welcoming community here. We want to provide the services. We just want to be treated like the, the servers that we are. We're doing great work for everybody in the state and the local community. I want to make sure we get that clear and understood by uh, the towns that don't have these, these situations to address. Uh, very good point. I, I'm so sorry, Dennis, because I think you are on a special committee for that, to increase that pilot as well, right? To Push more money towards these uh, the poorer towns, and, and we're being we being one of them. Yeah, that's a long story, but we uh, uh, I was part of a committee that included mostly uh, big city mayors, actually Luke Bronin and, and others. Uh, Elliker. Mayor Elliker from New Haven. Uh, we used to meet at his office, and we went over this for oh many many meetings, and uh, we uh, uh, Mayor Elliker contacted Marty Looney the. Uh, President Pro Tem of the Senate and uh, Marty put in a bill to make it so that uh, we have a three-tier uh, uh, pilot system and the first tier gets paid a higher percentage of the value of the projects that are eligible for pilot. And, and you know, I just want to emphasize that not all tax-exempt property is eligible for pilot, but fortunately the hospital and the university are. Not, but not every everything here is. And there's a lot of small nonprofits that we get nothing for. We get no taxes. We get no pilot. But but in any event, um, we did, we were able to get a higher pilot rate for the for the uh, university and for the uh, and for the hospital among a few others uh, because of this group that got together and and worked on this. And I I played a major role in getting the group together. Along with uh, oh, Don Niles and Charlie Critch were backed me up on it. They were supportive of, of uh, an effort to try to get CCM to create this group, and uh, we did create the group. And um, I was a member of the group, and I was on the town council, and we were successful in, you know, increasing the amount of pilot money for towns like ours, Hartford, New Haven, Bridgeport. New Britain, Waterbury, towns like, and New London. Norwich. Norwich, but, but, you know, we got a lot more, but I'll tell you what, Hartford and New Haven and Bridgeport, they got a lot more money because they're bigger. Their, you know, their pilot uh, money is, 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 uh, is greater, and, and they got, they got a, a lot of money in dollars. But we, we did get a big increase, and in, um, that's helped a lot, and there's been a lot of other things that are being, are being done to try to improve the situation. And if I had my way, the towns would get pilot for every uh, 
tax-exempt property in town. Well, it's funny you should mention that, Dennis, because I put in bills, uh, uh, I try to put in bills every year for the ever since we got this one done, and to add all the properties that are tax-exempt to the payment in lieu of taxes statute, which is $1.6 billion. Now, you know, they kind of just looked at me like said, okay, Johnson, yeah, right. So... <laughs> <laughs> but, but I'm going to still work on it, and uh, I'm still going to try and get out there and at least let everybody know. The big thing is to let everybody know how we're subsidizing the state. We are subsidizing the state uh, for the nonprofits, for the universities, for the hospitals. This is a subsidy from those towns in which these, pl these places are and, and for the properties that are not taxable. And the state uh, legislators, especially in the wealthier districts, just can't resist adding another, another tax-free opportunity uh, to make. Uh, if, if you want to give tax-free opportunities, let me just say this: I'll vote for them if you make the state pay for them. I'm not wild about making just the towns pay for it. And we need to make sure people understand what they're doing when they add more to the to the to the uh, properties that do not get any payment in lieu of taxes or anything at all. So that is something that we need to continue to make sure we march around the state and let people know how we're taking care of them and that uh, they're getting a free ride because of the of the towns like Hartford, Bridgeport, Waterbury, Wyndham, uh, Norwich, and London, uh, and, and uh, they're getting that free ride because of us. Yes. I agree with everything you both said, and I, and I appreciate the work that you've done and have made budgets easier in these trying times. And that brings me to my next point, which is we've had a lot of inflation. And that pilot money and all that work that was done for years came along right about the time we got hit with this huge inflation the last few years with wages. Uh, the markets are very tight, especially the municipal markets, tighter than other markets, uh, job markets. So we are we're getting through that. So our budgets, uh, just in a, in a summary, uh, we have increases in expenditures are offset in the general government budget, but more, more than offset by other revenues. Again, we're getting lots of revenues from different places. Our department revenues continue to be up with all the activity. We're getting more interest on our investments because, of course, the interest rates are higher, but we have more investments now. So we're seeing more, inf more uh, investments there. We've put money aside to help with all the debt service that we've got from all these projects we talked about. You've got to pay for them. But we put money aside anticipating the day when we would have more payments. So that money is helping us to offset taxes. So the summary here for you is in the general government budget, we're down. We're down on an equalized mill rate based on the reval. We're going to be down 0.36 mills. The uh, Board of Education uh, is going to be up 1.32 mills, and that nets out to be 0.96 mills or a fraction of a mill higher. And that's, again, an equalized uh, mill rate. Uh, we drop it down. So here's the mill rate. The mill rate would be 27.89 mills after the reval, after the increase in expenditures offset by revenue. So a considerably lower number than we've seen in the past uh, in our town. And again, we continue to be successful offsetting expenditures with all types of revenues. And that's what you know, we talked about, we dreamed about this years ago, that we, if we succeeded enough, any of these increases, to have a great team, to have all these capital improvements, would be offset by the return on investment. And we were literally seeing that with direct revenues. Uh, over to the city, uh, we have a, uh, a little different picture. Again, increases in wages, uh, pensions, uh, insurance, as usual, to try to hit, hit this inflation. And by the way... We have to catch up with inflation, too, because the government, we're, we're building budgets that are a year to a year and a half out, so we're still making up for inflation that was sort of behind us that we didn't have a budget for in the past. So it's not just that inflation is bad now. It might have been bad last year. We just didn't, we didn't put enough money in the budget to cover it. So in the city, we have that such a situation where we have to give our fire and police officers raises. We gave a pretty good package to our firefighters we had to a couple years ago. And now we're still paying for some of those increases. You phase them in. And then the police department, we had to give those folks raises because they were getting picked off by other police departments. So anyway, the, the bottom line for the city, with a, a small addition, as, as Dennis mentioned, of a uh, community service officer to help with the freedom of information request that we get a lot more of now because of the way the world is and the body cams and all the dash cams, people have more to ask for. So that costs money. 
to retrieve that data when people have the right to see it, and we have to go retrieve it. So anyhow, we added a little position there, but that wasn't a whole big increase in the budget, mostly the wages and inflation. We're going to see a mill rate increase uh, after we normalize it for the revaluation of 0.74 mill increase. So again, a fraction of a mill um, offset again. We have we have some revenue there that we received from the state um, that helped off with the uh, the mill rate. So our new mill rate would be 9.17 mills. It used to be 11.19 mills. And before that, if you recall, we were up near 14. Yeah. So uh, we've gone from 14 in a few years down to 9.17. Uh, that's a pretty good move for everybody. And if you, I think if people go back 5, 10 years, we're probably about flat. So... Uh, you know, I, I mean a flat, like as in your taxes, not just the mill rate, because the mill rate is lower than it used to be, you know, five years ago. So, again, not a bad budget year, really. If you think think of budgets as as expenditures offset by revenues, um, challenging, very challenging environment to work in. But we're doing a great job heading it off and presenting a budget to the people. They should be very happy with this budget. I'm a finance guy. I'm a cheap guy, and I think it's there's a lot of value here. Yeah, taxes are going up, but not really at the rate of inflation the last three years for our community. So they, that's that's what you're looking at. We're going up at a slower rate than inflation, and that that's a very good accomplishment for us. Well, that's a huge accomplishment, and it's great that you're uh, a budget guy because that's uh, that's just what we need in somebody who's managing our town, and uh, and the communication with all the different uh, you know boards and commissions and so on to make sure everybody's uh, talking about the same thing. So that's uh, it's very very important, and getting that. Uh, communication out to the public so they understand that, oh, my mill rate's going to go down because my property values went up. So that's not going to mean a big increase in my tax bill. So having that kind of communication, and of course you also mentioned the fact that, um, you know, it's a shift, some of it shifts based on the values and so on and so forth, uh, whatever, wherever the biggest increase in value is, they're going to have, you're going to have more of a shift. Uh, and you mentioned last time the business uh, community had some, not as uh, great a time, and maybe we'll have a better time this time. If I'm understanding what you said, Jim. Yes, that, that you were on the same page there. And again, we, uh, you know, there's some things we just can't control. You know, the pensions, for example, they go up and down. We have very well-funded pensions, and this is something that's been going on in Wyndham for years. Uh, we're over 90% on many of our pensions. We have, you know, I have seven unions uh, that I that report to me, and they have, you know, we have good pensions, that which attracts good talent to our community and keeps it here. And that's another reason we succeed so much, because we have some of the best people in the business uh, doing the work in all these different departments. Well, we have a pension to help with them uh, to recruit and retain them, but it's so well-funded that a lot of the money that's needed to pay those pensions, it's through the investment interest and investment experience that we get uh, from all the money we have in the bank, which has been very well-managed uh, over these years. So, uh, But they, it fluctuates from year to year. So we look at really a, a year in the, in the past when the actuaries are trying to calculate what our contribution to the pension was, and this last year, we look at the end of 22, because we didn't quite, when the calculation came out, it wasn't quite the end, you know, all the numbers weren't in for 23. Well, the end of 2022, if you recall, the stock market was down, and so were our investments. Well, what happened is the end of 23, they roared right back, and we're, we were way up at the end of 23. But the calculation is based on a prior year, and we had to increase our pension contribution, which is part of the reason our budgets are up a little bit. Um, the, uh, the hope is and the expectation is that when we do our budgets next year, that number is going to go down because of the, the investment experience that we had in, uh, in 2023 was fantastic. We're seeing a very good return, of course, in 2024. Uh, so, again, all is well, uh, but uh, that's a little bump we had to overcome. Insurance, of course, like everybody else, uh, we have a high deductible self-insurance plan for our, most of our staff and the general government in the city, and that is very efficient. But we do see increases, like everybody else, maybe not so much as others, but we do see increases. Everybody's got good insurance. I know some people are concerned that when you think, say high deductible or self-insurance, uh, that maybe we're not giving our, our good employees a good plan. It's a fantastic plan. Uh, we make a little contribution to that, like most employers make their employees make. And But it's very efficient. I'm very happy with my plan, and, and I have the same plan that everybody else has. So um, it's all good, and uh, nothing but good news. 
And uh, that that was my summary for the budget. So if you have any questions or uh, any other comments, I'd love to hear them. I just have a comment. We're less than a minute to go, and uh, I just want to thank you, Jim, for being on the air with us to go over all these uh, details about the budget. And, uh, you know, we may even ask you to come back one more time before the uh, before the referendum on May 14th. And, um you know, we'll see how that works out. But in any event, I knew when we hired you that you were a guy with a big heart who cared about people, but you were also uh, you were also very frugal. And, uh, in fact, I used to refer to Charlie Critch, who was on the town council, who I, lo- I love the guy. He's a great member of the town council. And then sometimes I would refer to him as a cheapskate. And, but he was very good at it. And, and uh, he, between you and him, you guys have done a great job of managing the town's uh, finances. And I think we're in terrific shape. And the people of the town of Wyndham, I think, appreciate that. So I'm expecting a uh, budget that passes by a large margin on the 14th of May. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, Jim. Thank Thanks you for being on the show. We really appreciate all your work. And we appreciate your being with us uh, this evening. We'll be great. back thank next week with another great show. Thank you.